and applying a conservative estimate of four indirect deaths per one direct death to the 37,396 deaths reported, it is not implausible to estimate that up to 186,000 or even more deaths could be attributed to the current conflict in Gaza. Using the 2022 Gaza Strip population estimate of 2,375,259, this would translate to 7 to 9% of the total population in the Gaza Strip. A report from February 7th of 2024, at the time when the direct death toll was 28,000, estimated that without a ceasefire, there would be between 58,260 deaths without an epidemic or escalation and 85,750 deaths if both occurred by August 6th of 2024. We are one month away from August, from August 6th. We all knew that the numbers of people that were massacred in Gaza was gonna be much higher. Some of us were estimating 45, 50, 55,000. But 186,000? There was a... story that recently came out that I would like to share with you all. And this is being shown all over Twitter right now, but I want to get down to the nitty gritty on this one. Uh, this is out of The Lancet. And it says here, by June 19th, 2024, 37,396 people have been killed in the Gaza Strip since the attack by Hamas in the Israeli invasion on October 2023, according to the Gaza Health Ministry, as reported by the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. The ministry's figures had been contested by the Israeli authorities although they have been accepted by Israeli intelligence services, the UN, the United Nations, and the World Health Organization. The data is supported by independent analyses, analyses comparing changes in the number of deaths of UN Relief and Workers Agency, UNRWA, staff with those reported by the ministry, which found claims of data fabrication implausible says the collection data, collecting data is becoming increasingly difficult for the Gaza Health Ministry due to the destruction of the much needed infrastructure. The ministry has had to augment its usual reporting based on people dying in hospitals or bought in dead with information from reliable media sources and first responders. This change has inevitably degraded the detailed data recorded previously. Consequently, the Gaza Health Ministry now reports separately the number of unidentified bodies among the death toll. As of May 10, 2024, 30% of the, the 35,091 deaths were unidentified. <sighs> Says some officials and news agencies have used this development designed to improve data quality to undermine the veracity of the data. However, the number of reported deaths is likely an underestimate. I'm going to repeat, it says, however, the number of reported deaths is likely an underestimate. So this is out of the Lancet talking about how there have been more people massacred in Gaza than even we figured because of the extermination of Palestinians by the hands of Israel. 
Let's continue. It says the non-governmental organization Air Wars undertakes detailed assessments of incidents in the Gaza Strip and often finds that not all names of identifiable victims are included in the ministry's list. Furthermore, the UN estimates that by February 29th, 2024, 35% of buildings in the Gaza Strip have been destroyed. So the number of bodies still buried in the rubble is likely substantial with estimates of more than 10,000. Meaning they have just scratched the surface of finding all of the massacred people in the Gaza Strip. All right. Now, it says armed conflicts have indirect health implications beyond the direct harm from violence. Even if the conflict ends immediately, there will continue to be many indirect deaths in the coming months and years from causes such as reproductive, communicable, and non-communicable diseases. How many times have we seen photos of little children starving to death in Gaza because of a famine? because of Zionists, Israelis, that are blocking aid from coming into Gaza. They're blocking medicine, food, water, and fuel from coming in, thus meaning even though the bombs didn't kill them, the starvation and the disease will. And you think this is still justified and you think you want to blame Palestinian resistance. That's the problem. Is that people who make excuses for this are literally making excuses for extermination. And there's no coming back from that. Let's continue. So as the total death toll is expected to be large given the intensity of this conflict, destroyed healthcare infrastructure, severe shortages of food, water, and shelter, the population's inability to flee to safe spaces and the loss of funding to UNRWA, one of the very few humanitarian organizations still active in the Gaza Strip. It continues, and recent conflicts such, at, such indirect deaths range from three to 15 times the number of direct deaths. And applying a conservative estimate of four indirect deaths per one direct death to the 37,396 deaths reported, it is not implausible to estimate that up to 186,000 or even more deaths could be attributed to the current conflict in Gaza. Using the 2022 Gaza Strip population estimate of 2,375,259, this would translate to 7 to 9% of the total population in the Gaza Strip. A report from February 7th of 2024 at the time when the direct death toll was 28,000, estimated that without a ceasefire, there would be between 58,260 deaths without an epidemic or escalation and 85,750 deaths if both occurred by August 6th of 2024. We are one month away from August, from August 6th. And an immediate and urgent ceasefire in the Gaza Strip is essential, accompanied by measures to enable the distribu distribution of medical supplies, food, clean water, and other resources for basic human needs. At the same time, there is a need to record the scale and nature of suffering this in this conflict. 
Documenting the true scale is crucial for ensuring historical accountability, acknowledging the full cost of war. It is also a legal requirement. The interim measures set out by the International Court of Justice in January 2024 require Israel to take effective measures to prevent the destruction and ensure the preservation of evidence related to allegations of acts within the scope of the Genocide Convention. The Gaza Health Ministry is the only organization counting the dead. I repeat, the Gaza Health Ministry is the only organization counting the dead. So when you have Zionists say, well, they're lying. All right, then you get out there. You start counting them. You count them. Let us know. But they're not getting out there to count them, are they? They're not uncovering them from the rubble, are they? No. It's the Gaza Health Ministry that's doing it. They're the ones. And now you have non-governmental organizations saying that, yeah, most likely they're undercounting. It's more than that. Furthermore, this data will be crucial for post-war recovery, restoring infrastructure, and planning humanitarian aid. So that's from the Lancet, and I'm going to put this link in the article in the in the chat, just so that you guys have this, and you guys can share this among people who say, Bahamas. Because the thing is, is now we're getting up to, because now we're getting to the realm of more than a hundred times the people, the more than a hundred times Palestinians have been killed compared to Israelis on October 7th. And that's important to point out. When we talk about the disproportionate nature of what's going on. I also want to point to how a lot of the corporate media is now starting to turn on Israel. I'm going to share my screen here and we're going to see what Nico House actually points out. And Nico points uh, this out very well. Uh, I'm going to read this first. It says, Horetz publishes documents showing that Israel used its infamous Hannibal Directive on October 7th, not once, not twice, but multiple times after the same publication smeared journalists who reported the same months ago. Let's get into this. Nico House through Hotspot right now. Haaretz, a publication in Israel, admits that the IDF ordered the Hannibal Directive on October 7th after initially smearing journalists who made this claim months ago. It was crazy hysteria. Decisions were made without verified information. Yup, the documents and testimonies obtained by Haaretz prove that the Hannibal order wasn't implied or insinuated, but they actually used the word Hannibal. One example was at 7.18 a.m. at the Yifta Post after they realized one of the IDF soldiers had been captured. The order was given, Hannibal at Arez, and it came from the divisional headquarters. They dispatched the Zeke, which is a drone, and they handled their business. At 7.41 a.m., the order was given again. That wasn't the last time it was given. In fact, there were multiple times after this that the Hannibal Directive was explicitly given to kill Israeli soldiers so that they would not fall into captivity by Hamas. Hang on, let, let's stop right there. And so who is, who is going after Israel for murdering their own citizens? Do you, do you condemn Israel for 
murdering its own citizens? By the way, Israelis were actually murdered, with our federal dollars, with our money. Because who gives $3.8 billion a year to Israel? United States. Who's using those weapons that murdered Israelis? Who the IDF is using those weapons that were paid for by the United States? So not only has the United States contributed to the extermination of Palestinians, but the United States has also contributed to the killing of Israeli citizens. Let's continue. Take it away, Nico. Do y'all know how many of us were attacked, smeared, berated as anti-Semitic mm. because we reported that the Hannibal Directive had been used and most of us used reporting directly from Israeli documents before to prove that information. Here, Max Blumenthal points out mm -hmm. that Haaretz pegged him as a manipulator for reporting on the Israeli army's killing of many Israeli citizens on October 7th. Max also points out that the Washington Post published two lie-filled smears about members of the gray zone for helping to expose the Hannibal Directive scandal. Roger Waters tried to explain this to Piers Morgan, explaining that Israel was responsible for some of the death toll that day on October 7th, and Piers just shrugged him off. Like, no, 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 that's not true, that's not true. Bro, Sam Husseini tried to ask State Department spokesperson person Miller about the Hannibal Directive just last month and the State Department allegedly never heard of this Hannibal Directive. And I find that to be complete and utter baloney. They don't know what the Hannibal Directive is. Do we look like Boo Boo the Fool to you? I'm telling you right now. Sorry for interrupting you, Nico. Keep going, bro. Hannibal Direct. And I just love how you have all of these propagandists playing stupid or naive as they attack actual journalists for doing their job. Because it was literally in a Haaretz article that the Hannibal Directive is a thing. It was just canceled allegedly in 2016 by Israel's chief of staff. Yet another lie by Israel. Surprise, surprise. But as usual, it gets deeper. Now we all know by now that Israel had advanced knowledge of October 7th before it happened and basically did nothing about it. But what was even crazier is the fact that we found out, thanks to reporting by people like Ben Swan, that they knew that the party goers were being shot at the festival at 7 a.m. and told them to fend for themselves. The shooting started at 7 a.m. The IDF didn't show up until 3 p.m. And the military. That reminds me of police here in the United States. If you actually have an issue in the hood and then you call the police, they take their sweet little time to get to you. I guess that's what another thing they learned from the IDF, huh? So at, at 7 a.m., if you're being attacked and then the, 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 the military that's supposed to protect you doesn't show up till 3, that means they didn't care about you. Woo mm -mm -mm. Until 3 p.m. And the military officer responsible for telling them to fend for themselves just so happened to be responsible for the fact that the festival was moved from another area to the border of Gaza that day. So he moved them into the danger and then told them to fend for themselves. So just a hang on. This is another point. So you mean to tell me that Israel used their own citizens as bait.
The most moral army in the world, huh? And Zionists are defending them? When are you all going to condemn this? Told them to fend for themselves? What would they, what would they tell them to fend for themselves? Is it maybe because most of the people that are considered civilians at that music festival are actually uh, either current or former IDF soldiers that are probably already armed? Meaning that a lot of them are most likely already people that have served in the military. Meaning they have access to weapons too. Man, let's continue. The kids were keeping score here. Journalists were attacked for saying that Israel was at least partially responsible for the lives lost that day. And it turned out we were right. They weren't just indirectly responsible. They literally gave an order to kill Israelis that day. And in at least one instance, a group was moved from a safe location to a dangerous location and then told to fend for themselves as they were being mowed down. So and just to let you guys know, if you have a bunch of people within an open air concentration camp, and then you put a music festival right outside of that open air concentration camp. You don't think that you're not putting those people at a risk? You're putting them right next to that open air concentration camp? Obviously deliberate. Obviously putting the lives of Israelis in danger. That's Israel. Oh, man. So just like the violence we've seen from Israel since October 7th has been so destructive that it seems to have nothing to do with protecting the hostages or targeting Hamas, it seems like even the day of October 7th, all the damage that Israel wreaked that day had nothing to do with protecting or saving Israeli hostages and had nothing to do with specifically targeting Hamas. It, it's almost as if they were looking for a reason to go into Gaza and October 7th gave them that reason. Now, if you want to call me a conspiracy theory for that, go right ahead. So, yeah, that's one of the things I think is important is that when we talk about the death toll, uh, some of that death toll was actually, uh, of Israelis, was actually caused by Israel themselves. And so I think that's one of the, the, the parts that it is important to, to talk about. Now, I'm going to share this as well, because a lot of times they are going to try, uh, Zionists are really going to try to you know gloss over this, they're going to try to say, well, no, that's not really true. Uh, you know, Hamas, Hamas, Hamas. And then basically say Israel has the right to defend themselves. Meanwhile, you have a bunch of people in an open air concentration camp that have been there for years uh, that have been subject to inhumane treatment. And you expect them to just uh, heal and don't do anything to liberate themselves. All right, bet. So we're going to go into this from um Aaron Mate and I realized why they call him Buzzsaw I didn't realize why but now I, I, I can see it so Aaron Mate really takes this Zionist to task by the way side note this this dude got a punchable face I'm sorry but anyway he reminds me of one of those kids in school that that brags about you know him going places and having all these you know things and toys and my dad does this and my dad does that he reminds me of one of those kids oh I couldn't stand those kids anyway let's get into this 
So it says the Israeli outlet Horetz has confirmed what independent journalists Ali Abdu, uh, Abdunima, David Sheen, and Max Blumenthal reported from the start. Israel evoked the Hannibal Directive and slaughtered its own people on October 7th to prevent them from being taken captive. Former IDF spokesperson uh, Jay Con, uh, Conricus, who spoke for 10 minutes before me uninterrupted, repeatedly interrupted and deflected as I shared this fact. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, this dude right here on the right, I'm sorry, on the left, he is going to piss you off. He's going to piss you off. He pissed me off. He's going to piss you off. But I'm telling you right now, Aaron Mate handled this way better than I could. Way better. And thank God they're at separate locations. I'm just saying. All right, let's get into this because this is important. It did happen, that's been known for a very long time, from Israeli military sources and witnesses who reported seeing Israeli forces fire on them uh, on October 7th. The difference is that now, finally, an Israeli newspaper, Haaretz, has acknowledged this, and more Israeli military sources have come forward. The reporting from Haaretz says, according to one source, that the order was to turn the south of Israel, that frontier with Gaza, into a killing zone, which is exactly what happened. It underscores that Israel has no concern for civilian life, not just inside Gaza, but also its own people, because it did not want to have Hamas take captives that could be used for negotiations to free Palestinian hostages. And that's been lost here. There are thousands of Palestinian hostages in Israeli dungeons. And a major goal of Hamas here was to take captives and use them as leverage to free Palestinians who have been in Israeli dungeons for years and years and years. Now, before this uh, human pinky toe starts to uh, interrupt Aaron Monte, yes. So the whole reason for taking hostages that the Palestinian resistance was trying to do is so that they can exchange the, Pal the Israeli hostages for the Palestinian hostages that are being held by Israel because they want their families back. That's the whole reason for taking hostages. The whole reason why Palestinian resistance, if you look at the hostages from the Palestinian resistance versus the, Israel, the hostages that are, Palestinian hostages that are held by Israel, it's night and day because the, the hostages that are held by Palestinian resistance, they come out happy, they're good, they're in good health, they're not, uh, overly skinny from being starved. They don't have bruises all over their bodies from being beaten. No, but the is but the hostages that were held by Israel are. Their eyes are sunken in. They're super skinny. They lost a ton of weight. They have bruises all over their bodies. Right. Some of them suffer from sexual assault. So the thing is, a lot of times people don't want to focus on that. But yeah, that's exactly what happened. But the thing is, is that they're really just trying to get their families back, ultimately. But people want to say, oh, we want to release the hostages. But they only talk about the Israeli hostages, but they never want to talk about the Palestinian hostages. Let's continue. All right. Ugh, this guy's going to interrupt. I can't stand this. Dungeons for years yeah, and years and years. Goal, and goal. excuse me, I didn't interrupt you. I, I did not interrupt you. I did not. I did, I did not interrupt you, despite your many no, falsehoods. No, but what you're saying now, is disgusting. Point, excuse me. Excuse you're me. I, I didn't interrupt you. I didn't. murder. And, and you're whitewashing mass murder, which is the whole point of suppressing the truth about October seventh, uh, since it happened. We have not heard. Oh, this and I guess prominent. you are the bearer of truth, a Hamas apologist. You will tell viewers around okay. the world about truth. A, a propagandist for Hamas, okay. someone wanna, who spreads falsehoods and lies yeah. about Hamas. Just to let you guys know, Aaron Mate is an award-winning journalist from the Gray Zone. So whose word would I take more? 
um, the dude on the left who keeps interrupting whenever an inconvenient fact comes across? Or would I trust the word of Aaron Mate, an award-winning journalist that has really been on the ground uncovering lots of atrocities that have been happening all over the world? By the way, just in case anybody's wondering, yes, Aaron Mate is also Jewish. Yep. His father is Dr. Gabor Mate. So he definitely has authority on talking about this. Let's continue. And this for bit, Hamas, okay. someone wanna, who spreads falsehoods and lies yeah. about Hamas you, you, and apologizes for them for, and tries to whitewash the Can you stop talking now? I didn't interrupt you. You're a propagandist hostage. for the Israeli military, which is a mass murdering entity. And the whole point of this October 7th propaganda and burying the truth that Israel killed its own people was to manufacture support. Have you ever for been in Israel, Aaron? Yes, have you I, yes, ever I have. been I've in Israel? In, yes, Lately, lived, have you yes, seen I've it? lived in Israel. Yes, I've lived in yes, Israel. Have you actually, been in the kibbutzim after October the yes, 7th, I have. Aaron? Have no, you I been have here? Not, have no, you I, seen no. the families? Okay. Have you met them? Can you stop the flag? Have you met the So here's the thing, right? This is how Zionists operate. Once you start speaking fast, they have to interrupt you no matter what, because they don't want the people to actually hear the facts of what's being reported on the ground. Then what they'll do is they'll try to discredit you by saying, well, have you been to Israel? Have you? Have you? Huh? Have you been to Israel? Aaron Monte goes, yeah, I've lived there. So they try to discredit Aaron Monte, and Aaron Monte was like, bro, I'm one of you. I know, I know what the deal is. I peeped the game. I have been there. And I love when people who have actually been to the West Bank, who have been to Gaza, who have been to Israel, who are anti-Zionists, I love when Zionists go up to them, go, have you been to Israel? And they go, yeah, I have. Have you been to the West Bank? Yeah, I have. Have you been to Gaza? Yeah, I have. And what? What? I've seen it with my own eyes. I love when they do that. Because then, where, where does this guy have to pivot? He has nowhere. No, well. Oh, my gosh. No wonder why they call Aaron Mate Buzzsaw. Bzzz. Let's continue. Families, okay. have you met them? Can you stop the flex? Have you met you the survivors? Deflecting? Have you met the hostage survivors? Can you stop survivors? deflecting and interrupting? No, because I understand you, why you, you want to change the subject. You have any you authority on the matter. Okay, I speak as someone who's speak as if you know anything. You speak as if you know Israeli civilians, as if you know what Hamas did on October the 7th. I understand your you job as a You haven't been here. You haven't watched murder. Israeli it's civilians murdered by Hamas. I understand you're doing your job. I'm asking you to shut up now because I didn't interrupt you. You're a propagandist for well, mass murder, which is why tomorrow, you're trying to shut me up just in October. Excuse Hamas me, apologies. stop talking. I didn't interrupt you. I, I let you spew no, on I, for minutes. I did not interrupt you. Now, the reason why you went into- Hang on, did you notice he kept repeating the same thing over and over? Because he honestly cannot think of anything to really come back, come back at him with. He factually cannot compete with Aaron Mate. Funny part is, it's like someone told me, um, somebody told me this phrase, and I want to use it here. In a battle of wits, this guy has come unarmed. He's getting owned by Aaron Mate, and he can't stand it. I wish I would can get Aaron Mate on this channel. I would love to talk to him. I've reached out before, but I haven't really gotten any response back. But hopefully one day. Let's continue. Trap means because I'm acknowledging the facts, which is that Israel did kill its own people on October 7th and hid that truth to manufacture support for its own mass murder campaign inside of Gaza, which has killed tens of thousands of people. That's the atrocity unfolding before oh, our eyes Aaron, right Aaron, now. Aaron, let me jump in That's here because, Aaron, let me ask you. 
I mean, it is quite clear from their own admission through the way they were live streaming a lot of the barbaric acts they were committing that Hamas murdered many, many, many people that day. You presumably accept that. There certainly were atrocities on October 7th. Yes. Right. I mean, how many people do you believe Hamas killed and wounded? Well, the point is there should have been an independent investigation of this from the start, which well, Israel I'm has. Sure, look, I'm sure people, because, I'm, listen, sure, I'm just asking logically, you. Logically, excuse me. You're here, a journalist. Here, You're a journalist. Logically. You'd have seen all the same stuff as me, right? You'd have seen Hamas terrorists openly boasting about the horrors they were committing. It, it, is, it seems to me that it is indisputable that the vast majority of people who were killed that day were killed by Hamas. Now, what is significant no, not, no, what is significant to me is the revelation that this Hannibal directive was issued means that there was clearly some people on the Israeli side who were killed by Israeli forces as part of this open fire without constraints, even if it imperils the lives of Israelis. I don't think we know yet what the split is in terms of numbers, but I think to try and pretend, I mean, you accuse uh, Jonathan uh, Karikasar of deflecting, but to try and pretend that the vast majority you notice how the Zionist is super quiet now. Now that Pierce is speaking and defending Israel, he's super quiet. And so this is why you need a peep game. Because somebody like Pierce Morgan, who's still technically under the umbrella of working for Rupert Murdoch, who is a huge billionaire Zionist, of course, Pierce Morgan is going to defend Israel. This is why the Zionist is super quiet now because he's okay with Pierce Morgan responding to him because he sees Pierce Morgan as his colleague. This is why when it comes to corporate media and I consider Pierce Morgan corporate media, this is why you guys got to peak game because they're going to try to cover the ass of Israel, the United States and Western governments. They're always going to either try to cover up for them and say, oh, that's not true, or they're going to try to apply plausible deniability. So always, always, always take everything with a grain of salt when it comes to these corporate media operatives. I just I just noticed that. Uh, Jonathan uh, Karukasar of deflecting, but to try and pretend that the vast majority of people who were killed and wounded that day were not killed and wounded by Hamas would also be a deflection of the truth, wouldn't it? It would be a deflection of the truth to insist without evidence that the vast majority of people were killed by Hamas. We don't know because there has not been a credible independent investigation, which Israel obviously wants to stop. Now, think of it logically here. Certainly, yes, Palestinian militants committed atrocities on October 7th. But think of it logically. If now you have confirmation from Israeli newspaper and Israeli military sources that a directive was issued, to turn that area into a killing zone and to achieve that goal of preventing anyone that from crossing back into said. Gaza. Excuse that me. That's said. exactly what Howard said. I didn't interrupt you. I'm going to finish my sentence. No, that is that direct Excuse me. It if that directive is if that, that's nope. exactly what. In a debate, you are supposed to allow the person to make their point and then you come after without interrupting and debunk what they said. This guy is desperate desperate for people to not hear what Aaron Mate is saying because this guy you know what he's trying to do he is basically trying to keep the clock running so the clock runs out and keep interrupting so people don't actually hear the facts coming out of Aaron Mate's mouth he's trying to filibuster this entire conversation. That's how you know they're desperate. Because if the facts could be easily debunked, he would let Aaron finish his point and then he could debunk it. But he can't. And that's the point. And you can clearly see his frustration because he can't keep his yap shut. It, it, that, that's nope. exactly what it says. Nope. It says in Haaretz, excuse me. That's what it says. I'll post it online afterwards. Well, the People fact that it says so in Haaretz okay, doesn't me. make it true. I, and if you're citing okay, that's a source, what it is. please be specific. 
And it's a yeah, matter I of did. real consequences. I did, I, I did and you're lying about my story. The directive the Israeli, was to I'm into quoting an Israeli military isn't isn't source. Cor- isn't correct. All right, well, hang on, okay, Israeli hang on, hang on, source. hang on, please. He's interrupting about, but when you talk over each other, it's very hard to keep up with it. Let me bring in Gideon. Yeah, well, I'm not Let me bring in Gideon, Gideon because Gideon actually... No, no, I'm going to finish my sentence. I'm going to finish finish your sentence, and I'm going to go to Gideon, because he actually has work for her. See how Aaron literally has to fight? And then Pierce will allow this guy constantly to interrupt. Pierce is allowing the interruptions to happen. Are you a moderator or not? There is no neutral side here when it comes to this program. Pierce Morgan is on the side of the Zionists. And please continuously remember that. He is not a neutral arbiter. He's not calling balls and strikes. He's in it for the Zionist side. So please remember that. If one of the most sophisticated militaries in the world is employing a directive to turn the air into a killing zone and using its weapons of war, including Apache helicopters, then it's very plausible to assume that, yes, a large number of people were killed by Israel's own forces. That's why they call him Buzzsaw, because he cut through all the noise, cut through all the nonsense. And so, you know, when you think about it all, you know, encapsulate it all, is that really this is a extermination of Palestinian people that has been going on. And we are at 186,000 since October 7th. But we're not talking about October uh, 6th, October 5th, October 4th. We're not talking about 2019. We're not talking about 2014. We're not talking about 2005. We're not talking about 1967. We're talking about all the way since 1948, baby. That's when this all started. So when somebody goes October 7th, no, 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 no. Let's go back. You got to know where everything started from. That's part of dialectical materialism. You got to know where it started from in order to know why things are the way they are now. You got to know why materially what happened. So this is why it's important to know, oh, well, this is how it started. This is why they're doing what they're doing. Because if you keep somebody in in an open air concentration camp, subject to oppression day after day, while seeing their family members being massacred because Israel wants to mow the lawn, then guess what? Of course, they are going to have armed resistance against the oppressor. And that armed resistance is going to result in some people being killed. Unfortunately, that's the way it goes. The best way to actually save lives is really to stop the illegal occupation and apartheid and give Palestinians full equal rights. That's the way you stop it and allow the Palestinians the right to return to their homes and land. 186,000. And you mean to tell me that that's justified? Please. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.